Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is The Crochet Nurse, and today what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at interweave crochet. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification button below. So, I, yep, I got another magazine. I love, you guys all know, I love books, I love magazines. My biggest thing is on holidays, birthdays, those on my birthdays, those kinds of things. If people get me books and magazines, I'm happy as a clam. To be honest, I will take just about anything to read. So last, oh my goodness, December, when right around the Christmas time, there was a special for this interweave uh, crochet magazine. And I looked it up and I was like, hey, that looks pretty interesting. It's supposed to have a lot of clothing items, those kinds of things. They had a special on it for... Um, four magazines uh, for $15 and I'm like that's a good deal <laughs> I, I thought it was a good deal and so I jumped on it I just want to say up right up front that this magazine is a little bit smaller than the crochet magazine as far as height and width so maybe about a half inch round I don't know, just something I noticed just to kind of give you guys an idea um, but it feels about the same thickness as far as that goes so if you want to come along with me let's take a look inside the magazine and see what it's got all right let's take a closer peek i already thumbed through and put the paper clips on where the patterns are and i can tell you right away that the layout of this magazine is different than what they do for crochet exclamation point you know how in there the magazine they typically they'll they'll do a pattern and then they start the pattern on that page and then you have to thumb through the back of the magazine to get the rest of that pattern that's not the way it's done in this magazine in this magazine what they do is they'll put three or four pictures of the patterns that are coming up and then they group all of those patterns together in the next four or five pages so the patterns are grouped together and then they go on to the next set and so they're grouped together so you're not going and looking in the back for the other half of the pattern it's all right there laid out i really like that so let's take a peek i can say right right away i like this that's right on top there so we get in there with some advertisements there's advertisements right away so right on the front it looks like they break it up into sections for projects there's three different groupings of projects scandy shades of winter and then big and bulky and then down here at the bottom they tell us what the articles is that's another nice thing that i noticed already that this uh, magazine it's not huge but it has two full-size articles, which I'm really looking forward to that. And then extra little things that we'll see as we go through. So, and of course, then we have our little note that we always get and a little bit of advertisement. Let's move on. So first thing that really jumped out at me was this section right here. It's just a little write-up. So it's called New and Notable. And so what they're doing is they're putting on display items from folks. So a couple of these are from Etsy shops. So, so for those folks who are out there who put stuff on Etsy, the potential to get your stuff seen by people that are reading this magazine, you may be able to do that. Because this first one, number one, is Happy Hands from Etsy.com, Happy Hands Store. Then this other one is Craft Flutter by Creation. So absolutely, that's a nice feature. Then over here, we have the Reading Nook. See that? And this book has been out and about for a while now. Making with Meaning, I'm seriously considering getting that book. But I like that they have a book review. They do that in the We Crochet magazine, too, where they'll have a book review. Uh, but that's a nice little ride up there. Next. Oh, Crochet for Good, the Feel Good Project. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this or not, but these are dowels. It's called Crochet for Good. Um, these little dowels are made for handicapped children. So apparently this little doll was made for the girl who likes to wear blue outfits and she has a birthmark scar on her face. And so this is a project that's on Facebook. I can put the information below for you guys. Um, but you have to be approved to make the dowels for these children. And they have volunteers who will help you um, the first couple of times make these dowels. There's a couple other pictures of the dowels as well. And this is the person who runs it. 
but you can see like this little guy he has a cane but yeah so they'll help you make the dowels the first time and it's a really great way uh, to give back to people who have disabilities um, yeah and then after you make your first one and then they assign you kids they give you a picture and assign you kids and say hey make some dowels and uh, yeah fantastic thing to do next up is our first pattern this is that scandy style I would say I love this design I just love that design and the hat that goes with that drawing inspiration from the colors and styles of Scandinavia these five projects so there's five huh take you on a Denmark Norway or Sweden without ever boarding a plane this makes me think of um, of Courtney a lot of the stuff that she does so a hat and a scarf and there's the cowl that goes with it boy that's pretty isn't it wouldn't wear those colors but boy that's pretty triangles treat yourself to a matching set with a Scandinavian inspired pattern work and then it says it's going to be on pay and they're using Lovecraft's yarn I found that also several Lovecraft's yarn um, and it says on page 16 we're on page 9 next one is a sweater now look at that this looks like something I saw on We Crochet just recently on their website but they had color the it was color work up here on the top um, but these designs were very similar I would probably wouldn't do it in that color but I like it they're calling this the frost in pullover and they're using it says up here and it's on page 18 um, layering throughout the year sharon sheepy skies heavy and then here's another picture of it on the side it's kind of cool same woman wearing it all right let's see what's next oh boy yeah now we're talking socks look at that socks v chore socks angela plunkett these toe-up socks will keep your feet warm whenever you roam the alternating single double crochet pattern adds interest to the collateral colorful stock yarn kind of cool they're using paint box yarn from lovecrafts again and they're saying these are on page 21 and that's what i'm getting at so so the next one so we have i'm still like turning the same page and so then we have the patterns that are coming and coming up so this one is the last no there's two more here look at that pretty cowl i like those colors and so on this one they're using premier anti-pilling yarn to create this and just to give you an idea um the patterns the way they rank them in this book is one through four um, and most of them are twos and threes and so I haven't seen anything yet that was like a four that was super hard so this is an anti-pilling a more color work um, very pretty and then the next thing is a table runner look at that that would be perfect for the winter now that we're coming into spring maybe switch out that snowflake there uh, for something else and this runner they're using sugar bush yarn one weight so parka's table runner and it's being you sugar bush yarns dazzle or drizzle that looks okay i might make that but see now i'm at a paper clip so this next whole section we just what looked at five six pictures all of it's right there for the patterns yeah that's nice um, next is an article crochet color work again Courtney I'm, I keep thinking of Courtney <laughs> with all the stuff that she puts out on mosaic here um, this is just like right in her wheelhouse yep so they're telling you this is a nice article they're going through the whole process showing you what the color work is telling you the standards of the color work the fair aisle color work showing you what it looks like on the front and back and then going through that whole process of showing you how to do it very nice article how to change colors correctly within the round 
I say, look at this. They're still shot. It's like four page article. I will be looking at that. And they're helping you actually create this item here. So that's pretty nice. Tapestry crochet. I'm liking that as well. Okay. So let's move on. So now we're in the sink up part, which is the shades of winter. Fill your home and wardrobe with these four. So now we're going to do four patterns. And look at the first one. Look at that. I just like that design. I think it's a little long. Usually I like long tops, but that to me is a little long. What do you guys think, huh? And here's a close up of it. Just a pretty design. I like the little picos that they did on top there. This one is Arctic Pullover. And they're saying that this is a, this is actually a three, and so it's a little bit harder, and they're making it out of wool. Kind of nice. Hmm. Little mitts there. Hmm. I don't like them. I don't like how. You know, it's kind of sloppy, kind of looks sloppy a little bit right there. They're using a two-weight yarn on that one. Uh, and they say it's a two uh, lacy pine knits. Maybe it's the color I don't like. Here's another picture of it. I don't know. What do you guys think of that? Hmm. I'm not impressed. Let's move on to the wall hanging. I do like wall hangings. I'm hoping that on the next episode there episode <laughs> magazine that I get from these guys if they do wall hangings this one's trees I'm thinking Christmassy if it's a different design in there I might make it for trees like I say that's a little bit too Christmassy uh, but yeah I like that it has varied stuff in there and then of course because this is the winter edition we have to have our Christmas stuff yeah see that's pretty cool and then garland and then making ribbon out of yarn all of that's super cool oh, and i'm at my paper clips again so right there's all of those patterns for everything we just looked at super cool i like that and now we're on the big bulky beautiful yarn and there is that scarf huh and they're saying this is an easy you do the you do the little lace area the little white area and then you weave the bulky yarn in between i like that idea it's pretty cool I'm not sure i'd use those colors but i like the idea of what they're doing and they're using ultra super chunky from lovecrafts again these guys really like lovecrafts yeah then this next one is called the peach oh sorry peace <laughs> poncho um, it's okay uh, simple increases and decreases form a columnar, columnar pattern in this close fitting poncho the one row repeat is easily memorized making this a perfect travel or TV project yeah I can believe that yeah and it says that there's what six here okay oh boy all right y'all this is called homebody pullover and i'm sorry but that is hideous um i'll probably get comments for people who like it and god love you if you like it all good um but boy mm -mm. no not for me mm -mm. i do not like that i don't like the color i don't like that thing going on mm -mm. let's just move on it's called the homebody pullover in case anybody does like it Next, it is a Restful Shaw, light and lofty in an alpaca mohair blend. And that looks pretty, but you know what? If you look there, it's just a lot of, it looks like a lot of shell repeats. So that looks pretty easy. Not so hard. Yeah. Hey, y'all, we're at a paper clip there. And then on the back, we have our standard weights, abbreviations, those kinds of things. And then this is another view 
of all of the patterns in there. So which ones do you guys think you'd make, huh? I like the socks. This is just pretty. Um, this is pretty. I really like this one. Probably would make that shorter. Oh my god. I just gotta hide that. Yeah. And I don't remember seeing that one. But it's in the rug. Did I miss that? It's in there somewhere. Maybe we missed that. Did we miss the rug? Hmm? Huh? Maybe we missed the rug. Because that's important. We gotta see the rug. Alright. Where is that? Ooh. Can't be missing the rug. And there's the hat. Look at there. Now that's pretty. And there's the cowl that goes with it. Super pretty. And there's part of the rug. There it is. How about that? Now that's a keeper. Very pretty. All right. Yeah, I see a couple things I'll make out of here. So that's what this guy has in it. Let me get this all straightened out. All right. If you guys have any questions or comments, put them in the comments box below. I see a couple items in here. That rug, it might end up in my bathroom. <laughs> and that cowl pattern may end up with some other yarn that I have over there on my shelf. Maybe some of that homespun. We'll see how that goes. But any questions or comments, like I said, put them below. And I'll pop up some videos of other, uh, other magazines that I've done so you guys can take a peek at them too. All right, y'all. Have a fantastic day. Catch you next time.